In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create these vector puzzle pieces in such a way that they connect together, as you can see that I've done here on my screen. So I'll come over here into a new document and I'll get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is grab my ellipse tool and I'm gonna click and drag on the canvas to draw a really elongated ellipse like that. We want this going across much larger in width than it is in height. And then I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. So I'm gonna hold a click over this. Let me grab the rectangle tool. I'm gonna to draw a rectangle going over, I'd say about the top three quarters of that circle right there. We want this line right here sticking out. This is the line we're gonna be working with. So I'm gonna grab my selection tool now. I'm gonna adjust this just a little bit. That looks good right there. I wanna select both of those and then come over here to my shape builder tool. And with the shape builder tool, I'm gonna to hold the on Windows, it would be the Alt key. On Mac, it's the Option key. I'm gonna hold the Option key so we can subtract, and I'm gonna subtract that line right there. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna subtract this line, and then I'll subtract this line. And there we go, we're left with that line right there. And now I'll grab my Selection tool again. And for now, I'm just gonna take this and move this off to the side. Now we're gonna create some more circles. So let me grab my Ellipse tool again. And I'm going to click and drag on the canvas to draw a circle. I'm going to hold the shift key so that it's a perfectly round circle. And now I want to enable smart guides. So I'll come up here to view and I will look for smart guides. There it is right there. Keyboard shortcut is control U or command U. And now I'm going to grab my selection tool. I'm going to make a copy of this circle. So I'm going to hold the option key or it would be the alt key on windows and click and drag to make a copy. And I'll hold shift as well. And I want to place this copy down here at the bottom. And I wanna make this one about, roughly about two thirds the size of the original circle right there. So once that's in place like that, we're gonna take both of these and now we're gonna duplicate these. We're gonna hold the Option key or Alt if you're on Windows and just click and drag to make another copy. And now I'm gonna rotate this one around. So I'm gonna come out here until I get my rotation handled and click and drag. I'm gonna hold my Shift key so that it ends up perfectly 180 degrees like that. And now I'm gonna snap these ones over here like this. There we go. Now this part's really important because you wanna make sure that you have them snapped perfectly. So zoom in on these intersecting areas right here. We want them flush against each other like that. You don't wanna have any kind of space or gaps in there. So make sure the Smart Guides makes it so that it's pretty easy to connect them like that. But just make sure, double check that it's uh, everything's good there. So now I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna click and drag over everything to select all four of these circles. And now I'm gonna grab my Shape Builder tool again. And this time, I wanna create a shape out of these three shapes right here. So I'm gonna click and drag a line going through them so that we end up with that shape right there. It's like a peanut sort of shape. And now we can go back to our Selection tool and we can get rid of these circles now. We don't need these anymore. So I'm gonna select them, click on them to select them and press the Delete key. And now we have this to work with. I'm gonna take this line now. I wanna center this up on the page. So I'm just gonna align this in the center of the page vertically and horizontally. And then I'm gonna grab the peanut shape and I'm gonna rotate this around until it's upright. Now let me try that again. Hold the shift key while you rotate to make sure it locks it onto 45 degree angles like that. Now we have it perfectly upright. I want this one centered on the page as well. So let me center this up. And now I'm just gonna adjust the size of this accordingly. Uh, if you could try to visualize what's happening here, this shape is gonna be part of the puzzle piece and this line right here is gonna represent one of the sides or the contours of one of the sides. So I'm just trying to size this up, trying to visualize, if I could show you here, trying to visualize this area right here like that. So uh, that's something to keep in mind when you're sizing this up. And once you have that in place, well first let me take this shape and get rid of the fill color. So let me come over here and, actually no, I could do this over here. Click on the uh, red slash to get rid of the fill color. And I wanna select both of these shapes now and I'm gonna grab my Shape Builder again, and I'm gonna hold the Alt key or the Option key again and delete these lines out of here. And we wanna be left with just this right here. So I'll zoom out. Now I'm gonna grab my Direct Selection tool and I'm gonna click and drag over these two nodes right here, or it looks like one node, but there's two nodes there because they're stacked on top of each other. And I wanna join them together. So I'll come up here to the menu and I'm gonna click on this button up here that says Connect Selected Endpoints. And now that's unified into a single node or anchor point. And I'll do the same thing over here. I wanna select these two and I want to connect them as well. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of these nodes that we just worked with. And I wanna make them a little rounded because the corner as you can see there is a little sharp. So I'm gonna take this circular knot or this live corner widget as it's called and just bring this out so that that corner is a little rounded. 
so that it looks more like a puzzle piece because puzzle pieces tend to be a little rounded like that. And now I can grab my selection tool. I'm gonna scale this down. I'm gonna make sure I'm holding shift while I do that. And let me zoom in a little bit. And now I wanna make a duplicate of this. So I'm gonna hold alt or option again and just click and drag to make a duplicate. And I wanna rotate this one around. So let me rotate it around. I'm gonna hold shift so that it ends up being vertical like that. And I'm gonna take this side and place this over here. We want this end right here to connect with this end. So to ensure that that happens, I'm gonna hold the command key on Windows, that would be control. And I'm gonna click and drag this anchor point right here and connect it to this anchor point. And then I'll zoom out and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna duplicate this object, hold option or alt, click and drag it to duplicate. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna rotate this around let me rotate this around so that it's going the other way. So let me rotate this again. There we go. I'm going to hold the shift key. We want this upside down like that. And now we can grab the command key and connect that. There we go. And we just have one more to go. So let me, there we go. Let me make another copy of this. Rotate this one around. Hold Command or Control, click and drag that anchor point and connect it right there. And now we just wanna go through here and connect the corners of these anchor points. So let me grab the Direct Selection tool and I'll click and drag over these two nodes right here and I'll connect them. Do the same thing over here. I'll connect those ones together and then I'll do the same thing over here. And then after that, we have one more. And now I can grab my direct select or my regular selection tool and I could fill this in with a color. And you can see that we now have, like, let me get rid of the stroke. We now have a puzzle piece. And the way that this piece was designed, you can connect multiples of these together infinitely. So if I make a copy of it, I could rotate this one around. I'm gonna make this one a different color just so you can see. Oops, let me change that. There we go. And I could take this and I could just click and drag this into the other shape and it connects. Now, if you wanna make sure that it snaps in there perfectly, uh, I'm gonna grab the command key and I'm gonna grab this node right here and I'm just gonna snap it to this node of this object right here. And now it just snaps in there. There we go, it snaps in there perfectly. And you could do this infinitely. So let me make another copy of these two. And there you go, that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can create your own simple puzzle piece that can be used infinitely in Adobe Illustrator. Join the Logos by Nick mailing list and get over 200 free design templates, including logos, avatars, textures, infographics, and more. As a member, you'll receive news, updates, and tips about your favorite design apps. Just use the link below to subscribe for free and download your templates. As always, thanks for watching.